It seems that yesterday's commuter chaos extended past the tubes with a perfect storm of road, rail and air disruptions taking place all over London. Talk more about the disruptions at the airport is, uh, well, our travel expert, Simon Calder, travel correspondent for The Independent. Uh, thanks for coming in, Simon, as always. Uh, first things first, what happened? Exactly. Um, well, I've been trying to find that out. I know uh, the excellent Alex Beard has been as well. We're, we're in contact um, with the authorities trying to find out what happened. They just say there were IT problems. Well, clearly there were. Now, just to go back and uh, e explain how it works, of course, everyone's been through passport control. You line up, they scan your passport, which is machine readable. Um, the, it, it checks your who you are. It hasn't been stolen or whatever. Um, and generally, if you're carrying a, a UK or an EU passport or identity card, you're allowed through, which is terrific. Um, there are, of course, more difficult uh, hurdles for people from outside the EU to, to cross. Um, and they, again, depend on uh, IT systems. Something went horribly wrong yesterday. It broke actually during the afternoon, but of course it's only until the evening peak when you've got a whole wave of flights arriving back at Heathrow, Gatwick, Stansted, Luton, London City, uh, that it really got unpleasant. Uh, we, we got tales of four hour waits and of course when people did get through, as you say, um, they immediately came out and found that the um, Heathrow Express, I think, was working till 10 o'clock last night. Heathrow Connect broken, um, tubes on strike, absolutely the perfect storm. Um, quite worrying, though, isn't it, having a security glitch at such well, a high level? Uh, right, OK, you've got to see against this background, which is that there is, as you've been reporting, you know, lots of controversy about uh, immigration and... Uh, that is informing everything that the politicians are doing. In fact, what the sensible thing to do is, if you're an airport like Gatwick, where there were particular problems yesterday, um, I think probably five years ago, UK Border Force would have thought, OK, we've got flights coming in from Alicante, Malaga, Faro, we'll just wave those through basically, because we know they're just going to be full of Brits who've got retirement homes over there, maybe uh, Spanish people coming in, doesn't matter. Um, we'll wave those through and we'll concentrate on the flights that are of interest. However, there was such a furore about some flights being waved through a few years ago that nobody is going to do that now, and they would rather that you're standing there for four hours, even though they know that you're perfectly legit, you've been through a hundred times before, and all you want to do, thank you very much, is queue up for a bus and get home. So a bit of the public's own undoing five years ago now with the repercussions today. Oh, exactly. Um, is it all fixed? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I've been obviously trying to find out. Gatwick Airport say it is. Um, it's not a particularly busy time there. I'm trying to get a picture of what's happening at Heathrow because, of course, you get the first wave of flights in from the Far East, from Heathrow, sorry, from Hong Kong, from Tokyo, from Singapore, plus the American arrivals all kind of arriving about now. They've been flying over your studio indeed. And we will find out if places like Terminal 3, Terminal 5 are having problems because of that. No reports so far. I, I've been trying to find out whether it was um, just some piece of equipment or a communications issue that, that caused the problem, or whether it might possibly have been an IT upgrade that went a bit pear-shaped. We will let you know later on.